Hi Year 11 and welcome to a series of three videos for the topic discrete probability distributions. So we're going to look at discrete random variables, discrete probability distributions, expectation, variance and standard deviation. Now it's always a good topic when you get to start with a Dilbert cartoon and this says on the tour of accounting over here we have our random number generator 999999 and Dilbert says, are you sure that's random? And the supervisor says, well, that's the problem with randomness. You can never be sure. So let's begin with a definition of a random variable. It's just the possible outcomes that could occur from some random experiment. And this is an area of mathematics where statistics meets probability. It's not particularly difficult, but it is strange. So I'll ask you to bear with me for a bit. A discrete random variable takes distinct possible values, and we've talked about discrete data in the past with probability. And there's a picture there of discrete data. A continuous random variable, which we'll look at in year 12, takes its values in some interval on the number line, and it is smooth. You see that, the difference there? So discrete is sort of jagged, like whole numbers, whereas continuous is all numbers. Let's look at this example. Classify the following as discrete or continuous random variables. The total when two dice are rolled. So the first thing I do in this sort of situation is think about the sort of numbers that we're going to get. We could get seven or eight or two or 12, and they're all whole numbers. They're discrete data. So this is a discrete random variable. How about the heights of students in year seven? This one's continuous. Can you tell why? We don't have discrete numbers, so we can have decimals, for instance. Somebody could be 134.6 centimetres tall, depending on how accurate you want to get. How about the number of children in a family? That one is discrete data because we can't have half a child or a quarter of a child. And the number of days it rains in September, that's also discrete data because it's whole numbers. Now, all random variables have a corresponding probability distribution, and this is just the probability that the variables take the different values. So we denote the random variable as capital X, and this is what we write, the probability that X is equal to some particular value. We can shorten it like this, which you're more used to. Let capital X be the uppermost face of a six-sided die. What is the probability that that uppermost face is a six. Well, it's one sixth. What is the probability that the uppermost face lies between a three, but not equal to a three, up to and including a six? So it could be four, five, or six. Well, that's a half. So can you see how it's similar to probability, but it's just slightly different? Now, this is how we commonly write probability distribution in a table. We have our various values for x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have our related probabilities. What's the probability that x is equal to 2? Well, it's just 0.4. What's the probability that x is equal to 0 or 3? Remember, in probability, all means plus. So it's going to be 0.15 plus 0.2, which is 0.35. What's the probability that x is not equal to 3? Well, we just need to add these ones up, but I'll give you a little hint here. All of these numbers actually add to 1. They have to. So we could just do 1 take away 0.2, which is 0.8. So here are the properties of probability distributions, and one of them I've just given you a hint for. For a discrete probability distribution, all of the probabilities must be between 0 and 1. We're used to that. Probabilities must always be between 0 and 1. We can't have a negative probability, and we can't have anything greater than 1 because 1 means certain. Secondly, the sum of all the probabilities must equal 1. That's one we just talked about. And thirdly, all the values of x must be mutually exclusive. Do you remember what that means? It means there's no overlap. We can't have a value of x being in two boxes. So this is a really common question. Show that this is a probability distribution. How are we going to do that? All of these probabilities have to be in between 0 and 1. They are. And they have to total 1. 
So we just got to add up 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0 0.05. And they do equal 1 and so it is a probability distribution. They want to make the question just slightly harder, they might do this. The following table shows the probability distribution of a discrete random variable x. We've got our values here, 0, 1, 2, 3, our various probabilities, but we don't know the probability that x is equal to 3. And it asks us to find the value of k. Well, we know that this has to all add up to 1, and so k is simply going to be 1 take away 3 thirteenths take away 1 thirteenth take away 4 thirteenths, which is 5 thirteenths. And we use a histogram to graph probability distributions. So suppose we want to graph this probability distribution. We're just going to draw it up like it's a column graph. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here are our probabilities here. And we've just got columns sitting over the top of the numbers with no gaps. If all the probabilities for the different outcomes are equal, then we call it a uniform probability distribution. You can probably think of a few examples where this is the case, but a really common one is a six-sided die. All the values are the same. They're all one-sixth. Now, surprisingly, if we graph a uniform probability distribution, all of these columns will end up the same height. Okay, that's it for this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to look at expectation or expected value.